What does this say about our democracy? Nothing good. Um, it's not working. <laughs> Senator Joe Manchin spent the day after his vote to confirm Brett Kavanaugh campaigning at a senior citizen center in his home state. He was the lone Democrat to help get Kavanaugh on the bench today. But what looks like a flip-flop or a betrayal of his party to people outside West Virginia might be easier to explain to his constituents here. I've made some tough votes over my career. Uh, once I have the facts and I can come home and explain, I'm voting for it. So I, my vote was the same no matter what. West Virginians had been led by Democrats for decades, but they overwhelmingly backed President Trump. As the country becomes more divided, Manchin is hearing frustration on all sides. Frank Luntz, a veteran Republican pollster, tapped into that by speaking to West Virginians who've supported both Republicans and Democrats on the day that Manchin announced he'd back Kavanaugh. How many of you think Brett Kavanaugh told the truth? Raise your hands. Almost all of you. How many of you think Dr. Ford told the truth? Raise your hands. So you think they both told the truth? I believe that she probably was victimized. I, I have no, no concerns whatsoever about her story. I just don't think she knows exactly who it was. She's making a claim that can't be verified, substantiated by anybody other than, than this woman. And I, I feel sorry that she's upset, but I have a hard time with 40 years uh, and all of a sudden now I have clarity of thought and I can come in and not, I'm gonna- I'm She gonna, admittedly wasn't completely I, clear I just, in her thoughts. Nothing takes 40 years. If you're that much of a weak person that it took you 40 years to get enough- Do you enough, really want to say that? I do, yeah. I do. Are you because serious? If you're that way, anybody can talk you into anything. If you have that little faith in yourself that it took you 40 years to confront someone who put their hand over your mouth, you didn't go home to your mom, you didn't tell your best friend, you didn't tell law enforcement. Have you ever 40 had to deal years? with that situation in your life? You don't. 40 you don't years? understand what it's like to be a woman in this day and age where men get by with most things because you have a shame years. and people don't want to tell other people because it's gonna happen years. like her. People aren't gonna believe you. You can't always prove it. You're not gonna have a video camera. There are women who go to their graves with that secret. I'm not gonna destroy a man's career. Over because the fact he's a that man she's weak enough why? to wait 40 years to make the, 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 the allegation. But I, I want to ask you, I know this is personal. Did you ever face this situation? Yes. Did you ever face this in a physical way? Yes. In a way that Dr. Ford faced? By family, yes. By family? Yes. Can I have permission just for a moment to go here? Sure. When someone describes a woman as being weak, because she chooses not to relive it again and again. What's your reaction to that? I am offended by that, to be honest with you, because she's not weak. Um, I never spoke out about my situation, ever. Never told anybody. Why not? Shame. Even though I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, shame, pure and simple. And I didn't mean to offend you, ma'am, but my wife was abused as a child. She was sexually abused. She remembers it all. She has told me all of it. Any woman that would make that claim, I take seriously. I have three daughters and a granddaughter and a wife that's been sexually abused. I think the woman is weak. I use that adjective to describe her because that's what she reminds me of, a weak person. Should we be proud of this whole hearing, this whole process over the last couple months? No, but how many things from 50 years ago were even worse than they are today? What does this say about our democracy? Nothing good. Um, it's not working. <laughs> Who do you hold accountable for that? Our leaders. The House, the Senate, the President, everybody. You have a senator who's right in the middle of this. We know that Joe Manchin is a political opportunist, right? He, he licked his finger, he stuck it in the wind, and he said, which way is this vote gonna go? I'm gonna jump on that. And that's the only reason he did that. He, I mean, he followed the lead of Chuck Schumer. That's, because, a, pretty, that's a pretty ugly Well, I think it's analysis. obvious. I agree. That's obvious. I think everyone would probably agree with that. So raise your hands if you're voting for Manchin. So it's a pretty negative evaluation and you're still voting for him. They're, they're the Southern Democrats. He might be the last one on the planet. He's a West Virginia Democrat. And, 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 and somehow or another, I find that refreshing um, that you can get a guy almost John McCain style, that kind of looks at everything going, okay, what's it to my state? What way should I go based off what my state thinks, not what, not what the, 
the political leadership wants. Will you vote for Manchin? Yes. Did you vote for Trump? Yes. So you're, you voted Republican in 2016, but you're voting Democrat in 2018. I vote for the person that meets my needs or my ideas. Yeah. I no longer do party. Party lines to are some, blurred anyway yeah, now. Yeah, they are. That's West Virginia. I we, elected, we elected President Trump by 42 points, and we elected a Democratic governor by six or eight, and then he flipped to a Republican. I mean, this state's just unique. So this is what's fascinating to the rest of the country. They don't know people like you. They don't know West Virginia and how that works politically. When you come into the state of West Virginia and say that you're gonna take away coal miners' jobs and most people around here have family, friends, or somebody that rely on that, you're not gonna get my vote. It's our economy. I mean, we have thousands of people out of jobs that can't find a job because that's all they did from high school now. There's an alarmingly high addiction rate. Um, a lot of people are uneducated. If you look at the stats for college dropouts, high school dropouts, um, at an all-time high, a lot of you know teenage pregnancies, the welfare, I mean, the amount of people who are on some type of public assistance, it's ridiculously we high. Have, so we have tons of schools that are in the top 10. Hurricane mm -hmm. Middle School is number five in the country for all middle schools across the United States. But for every school like that we have, we have another one that's in the bottom 10%. Well, that's easily explained. We had Democrats in control of both houses for 82 years. 82 years of one party controlling both houses so you're of legislature. Blaming, you're blaming a political party for the lack of education in this yes. state. For the education because funding, for sure. For the certain. coal rots from our state. And they made us they, junkies. They made us, you They know. made us slaves to an economy and made us dependent on an economy that did no slaves good for us. Slaves to an economy. Yes. The interesting thing though, saying that we're not that great of a state, but these are a proud people. Yep. Don't knock West Virginia is all I gotta tell you. <laughs>